Hey, I'm Angie. And I'm Ryan. And we're Happy Healthy Vegan. vegan. Angie and I are back and she's getting over a flu, so bear with us here. Yep, still wearing my sweatshirt. <laughs> From last month. Speaking of which, yeah, <laughs> we did an episode last month covering this exact same British TV show this morning, which this anti-vegan activist Julie Bindle was debating Earthling Ed about how um have vegan activists been going too far. Yeah, and in our episode, we flashed briefly on her previous appearance on this same show, which I realized the topic of that one was Veganuary. Vegan January. Veganuary. Uh, rapidly becoming quite a trend. Uh, is it healthy, though, or is it a lot of hype? I've been a vegan for seven years. Uh, prior to that, I was a vegetarian for ten years before that. It's very much animal cruelty, uh, witnessing some of the cruelty that happens on, on farms. Here we have uh, Ju Julie Bindle. Uh, Julie is a journalist, not very much in favour of this whole idea of veganism. In other words, an anti-vegan. What do they even need Julie Bindle for? I mean, it's like a nice interview with Matthew Glover about Veganuary, like a perfectly positive, nice thing. And then you bring Julie Bindle out. Well, I'm not um, a vegetarian because I don't have a strong moral compass, unlike Matthew. And I'm not a vegan because I'm not a masochist. But <laughs> the issue for me is the environment and what you hear peddled by political vegans is that this is an answer to the world's ills. Julie, it's not just political vegans saying that veganism is an answer to some of the major ills of the world. Listen to, say, the United Nations, the governments of, say, the United States, and the United Kingdom, and peer-reviewed science all saying the same thing, that animal agriculture is one of the most destructive forces on the planet. The real environmental problem here, according to Julie Bindle, is avocados, though. Now, if you look at avocados, for example, which many vegans consume, avocados are not a vegan-specific food. And we're now consuming six times um, the, the, the number of avocados here in the West uh, than five years ago, even. Actually, her facts are completely made up and fabricated. Right, according to the Haas avocado industry here, since 2002 to 2018, avocado consumption has increased two and a half times in that time period. That's it. Not six or anywhere close to that. And according to the USDA here, United States avocado consumption has increased in the last five years, not even two times. Julie, always getting those facts wrong. Yeah, she's just, as we showed on the last episode, just completely going on national television and making stuff up. You know, the, the Mexican rainforest is being completely destroyed. The Mexican rainforest? I thought it was another rainforest. You can't escape avocado. Yeah. It means that the Brazilian rainforest has suffered because of the overproduction. So Julie obviously has no idea which rainforest <laughs> is being destroyed, allegedly, by avocado production, but she doesn't even know where avocados are grown here. As you see here from this Michigan State University report about avocado consumption, that the majority of the avocados grown in the United States come from California, particularly San Diego County, California, as Angie and I can attest to. To, we eat their avocados all the time and yeah. anyone who's been there knows that San Diego is not a tropical rainforest. Um, yeah. So you mentioned the Amazon rainforest, but 90% of the Amazon that's being cleared is for agriculture and it's animal agriculture. So what they're doing is they're using this land for grazing animals and they're also using this land to grow crops to feed to animals. Yeah, I mean anyone that actually does the research would know that. I bet she feels pretty dumb now, even bringing up the Brazilian rainforest. So, does she have any other points? Um, it's debatable. Let's see. I think we share exactly the same philosophy on animal welfare and cruelty. Oh, I doubt that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't eat much red meat. I have a fairly healthy diet. Oh, really? Um, and I'm lucky enough to be able to afford free range and organic things where necessary. Oh, that's rich. I seem to recall her calling us out for being too elitist and privileged. I would like the vegan movement to campaign to make this diet more accessible. They are coming from a position of privilege and denying how difficult it is to have and to provide a balanced diet for your family. So the very things she was calling veganism out for, for being too privileged, too expensive, exactly is the same thing she's doing, getting her free range and organic things. Hypocrite much? The problem that I have with, with this kind of the, the fundamentalist version of veganism, uh, as opposed to just cutting it all out of your diet, which of course can be healthier, but not always, Ugh. is the fact that nobody talks about how much time it takes to prepare these meals, to plan the meals, to do the shopping. Uh -huh. 
You want to know why they don't talk about that? Because it's not true. Are you kidding me, Julie Bindle? It's, it's not <laughs> take any longer to cook plants than dead animals. I mean, take take into consideration how, how long it takes to make a, a Thanksgiving turkey. How many hours does that take? Compared to, like, some rice and potatoes and steamed carrots, et cetera, et cetera. All I'm hearing is a ton of really stupid excuses. And it sounds like Julie Bindle is maybe only getting grab-and-go prepared foods. Well, guess what? Turns out that a shop you're probably well familiar with, Marks and Spencer, just launched a vegan range in time for Veganuary with 60 vegan friendly foods available for grab and go all across the nation in England. And it's like when you're at the market <laughs> to buy your meat, I mean, you're probably already buying plants. plants. So why would it take you <laughs> any longer to push your cart to buy plants than it does to buy your eggs and meat and dairy? It's crazy talk. And for women in particular yeah. who have dependents, whether it's three small kids or yeah. an elderly parent, they can't afford either the time or the... And is that something... The Bullshit. After that last time we covered Julie Bindle, I heard back from so many of you mothers out there, so many vegan mothers, talking about how it was actually more affordable for you to plan or prepare the vegan diets for your families. I mean, there was so many great comments and I really want to thank all of you for taking the time to debunk Julie Bindle here <laughs> in our comments. Yeah, I mean, let's look, let's look some of these cheap foods we found at the market right across the street from us here. A whole sack of potatoes, 20 pounds for ten ninety nine. A big bag of carrots, five bucks. 40 pounds of bananas for $14.99. And some a box of dreaded avocados Ooh. here for nine ninety nine. Pretty elitist. So Angie and I were just talking about this. I don't think we should really blame Julie Bindle as much as we should blame the producers of This Morning. Why did they even need to invite her? This show is supposed to be about Veganuary. Putting, Ostensibly. Shine a spotlight in a very worthwhile movement, a worldwide movement. Yeah. But once they bring Julie, the anti-vegan, with her just pulling nonsense out of her butt claims here, it turns into a poop show. It's, yeah, it's just the Julie Bindle show. And as we've really pointed out she does zero research her half-assed opinion is clear that she's never actually shopped for and prepared vegan foods to say these <laughs> things when all of you guys out there know what it's really like so many people have said that they now save so much money now that they've given up eating meat and dairy products and are eating only plants and this nonsense about it being not healthy i mean those of you guys that are already watching happy healthy vegan you know that we espouse a whole food plant-based diet. Of course, we do occasionally eat some of the elitist vegan foods <laughs> <laughs> when they're offered to us, but the day in and day out are just plants that are readily available and it, it, it doesn't take necessarily any longer to no. cook these than anything else. Nonsense. It's totally crazy. So what we wanted to do actually to help you guys that are interested in uh, getting a family member or maybe even yourself onto the Veganuary wagon, if you're not already, not already vegan, we, we want to give you a special deal on uh, Keep a Car Baby Cookbook, both the physical and the digital one for the entire month of January. Yeah, we have a coupon code, Veganuary. Use it on our website, shophappyhealthyvegan.org. You can use it all month to get either the physical book or the ebook version of Keep a Car Baby yes. to help you on your Veganuary journey here. Yes. So, yeah, I'm just really disappointed to keep seeing this lady pop up anytime that there's a vegan discussion because the thing is, it doesn't give any airtime to the people who actually have a lot of really great information and facts that could be helping the viewers of this morning. I mean, Matthew barely got a word in edgewise, and that's a shame. I mean, when you look at it, Julie Bindle, as far as a vegan discussion goes, brings absolutely nothing to the table. She's not Zero. like an expert in veganism. Nope. Nutrition. Has no knowledge. Nothing. It's just a windbag like Piers Morgan that you bring out to stir up controversy. So I'm really confused by this. Let me know in the comments down below. Why do you guys think these morning shows only feature vegan guests when they bring someone else on to debunk veganism? Yeah, why can't they just discuss veganism alone? 
yeah. without an anti-vegan there to poo-poo on it all. Or with some experts <laughs> in the field of health or, or at least some environment or something, something that has beyond, some bearing beyond on Beyond Julie it. and Piers Morgan's <laughs> realm of knowledge. Very confusing to me at this time. <laughs> so let us know. We'll, we'll read through them with a lot of curiosity. Hit like, like this video, share it, and hit the notification bell on our channel to make sure you're notified for all our videos, live streams, activity on our community tab, the whole ball of wax. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. So until next time, guys, remember, Julie, doesn't suck being vegan. <laughs>